This is the Sunday. This is the day when we as a church draw a line in the sand. This is the day on which we turn the corner, if you will. This is the day after which we run headlong, full speed ahead into what God has called us to be and do as his church. This is the day. I'm confident that five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, people will look back and they'll say, 2022, that was the year when Hillside blossomed into all that God wanted them to be and called them to be. And look at the fruit that has come out of that. Look at the harvest that we have reaped as a church since 2022. This is the day. Are you ready? Ken's ready. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Your board for the last three months has been working on what exactly is our mission that we are called to as a church. The mission, that's the one thing that God has called, that they believe, that we believe is the board that God has called us into, that God has called us to be and do the one thing that we are to chase after, the one thing that doesn't change, that's non-negotiable, that everything falls in line underneath here at Hillside Community Church. They've been working on that for like three months now, um, and we've, we've fiddled with it and, you know, played with words and phrases, and we've, we've polished it, and we've narrowed it down, and we've landed on it. So I want to share it with you today. Living like Jesus to reveal the living God. This is our overarching, big picture, broad view mission here at Hillside Community Church. To live like Jesus to reveal the living God. That's what we're called into. That's what we're about. That's what everything that we do here will be in alignment with. Enabling us, empowering us, equipping us as we live like Jesus and reveal the living God. And how are we going to do that, right? What is easy? Isn't that true in life? Knowing what to do is usually pretty easy in life. How to do it, that becomes the more difficult, more challenging um, aspect of it. This is great, knowing what and how. As we talked about last week, 2022 is the year of discipleship. How we're going to do this is by being a church of disciples who make disciples. By being a church of disciples who make disciples. Now, in some ways, that sounds like, you know, what's, you know, what's, what's new here, Jeff, <laughs> right? I mean, this sounds like the same old, same old. And in a way, it is. Because in a lot of ways, there's absolutely nothing new here. But it seems to me that it's absolutely um, new and different and life-transforming and has the power to change lives and to do this, to reveal the living God um, here in this church and in the community. So we're going to dive into... Oh, can't see it over there? There we go. Living like Jesus to reveal the living God. Can we all see that now? Okay, a little bit better. Back there in the corner. Here we go. I'm going to raise it up. <laughs> I'm going to put it up here. I'm going to put it up here. There we go. Living like Jesus to reveal the living God. And in this year of 2020, um, being a church of disciples who make disciples Nothing new, but it seems to me that, we, that the church in general has kind of lost sight of this. As we talked about last week, I took a poll, kind of a soft research, if you will, asked people to raise hands. You know, who's ever been in a like, formal discipling relationship? And about four of us, maybe five, said, yeah. Um, most of us have not been discipled. Um, we've been taught about the church, um, church membership, right? Um, being a churchman or a churchwoman, um, we know how to do that. But how to disciple others, how to lead people 
in, um, discipleship, into a discipleship process, which is what? Discipleship really is just facilitating the process of becoming like Jesus, becoming like Jesus, that we can live like Jesus. We can live lives that reflect Jesus and reveal the glory of God. There's nothing new there. And yet it is the key to the bearing the fruit and harvesting the fruit that God has for us. It's really the key to the success of the church since day one. I mean, that's what the first disciples did. That's what the first century church did. They lived as disciples who made disciples. And look at the impact that that had. Look at the fruit that that bore, the harvest that that reaped. It literally changed the world. So it seems to me it makes sense. What worked for them ought to work for us. So maybe we should just do what they did. And even more basic than that, maybe we should just do what Jesus told us to do. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 28 and John chapter 1. So you guys can get that ready. Matthew chapter 28. We'll start there, spend a little bit of time there, starting at verse 16. And my mouth's getting dry already, so I need water. Matthew 28, starting at verse 16. This is what we know as the Great Commission. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. How much authority has been given to Jesus? How much? All authority has been given to Jesus. Uh, just that, that does, that just, but that's just a metaphor, right? I mean, just certainly not all authority, some authority over spiritual matters. No? <laughs> all authority. All authority. Yeah, in where? In heaven and earth has been given to Jesus. And what's the very next thing he says? Go therefore and make disciples. Seems to me that if Jesus, who was God in the flesh, literally the Son of God, God on earth, who's been given all authority in heaven and earth, if that's the case, then what he tells us to do, it seems to me we ought to do. And some of it we, we do, right? I mean, he said, um, you know, when, uh, when you gather together, have this meal together. And, you know, have some bread and have some juice or wine, depending upon your tradition, you know, and remember me. And we're going to do that today. We're going to have communion today and celebrate that. You know, he told people, you know, to baptize, be baptized, which we do. And we're actually, heads up, on April 3rd, I think that's right, on Sunday, we're going to have baptisms here at Hillside. We've got at least one, at least two, hopefully, and maybe more. We have communion, we have baptism, because Jesus said to do it. He also said this, go and make disciples of all nations, of all people, baptizing them and teaching them. Teaching them. What are we to teach them? Seems pretty simple. It seems pretty clear. We're to teach them, well, he says, to observe all that I have commanded you. So we're to teach them the things that Jesus taught. So we're to teach them, it seems to me, about Jesus, to share with them who Jesus is, what he's done, and what he's taught, and to teach people this. To share with them who Jesus is. And if we're going to make disciples, it seems to me then we have to first be disciples. If we're going to make disciples, 
We have to be disciples. If we're going to facilitate a process of becoming like Jesus so that we can be living like Jesus, so that we can help coach and lead people into living like Jesus, then we have to first be disciples ourselves. And how do we do that? We're going to look at John chapter 1. When Jesus calls the first disciples in John's gospel. So we're going to start at verse 35. Chapter 1, verse 35. The next day, again, John was standing. That's uh, John the Baptist, the guy with the, you know, clothed in camel's hair, eating locusts and wild honey. Um, that guy. The next day, again, John the Baptist was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. So they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and follow Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which means Peter. It's a fascinating um, account of this calling of the first disciples. Um, I love, I, well, I'll say I love John. Not like, you know, can you, anyway, one of my favorite books in the Bible. Um, for various reasons. won't get into all of that. But I love this account. And what I see every time I read this is really a very simple discipleship process or the beginning of a discipleship process, of facilitating a process through which um, people um, become like Jesus. Um, we see that happening here. Um, John the Baptist, who has this movement, who started this movement and has these followers, he has disciples as he's kind of been there, put there first by God to begin this whole movement of the kingdom of God coming into the world. And so he's started this movement, and he's been baptizing people with, with water, and he's um, generated this, you know, a number of followers now, of disciples who are following him. But when Jesus comes on the scene, John recognizes this, and so he begins to point people to Jesus, to lead people to Jesus, so that people then can essentially cease following John and now begin following Jesus. And he does that here. The first, he's pointing people um, to Jesus. Look, look, there is the Lamb of God. Okay? And people then begin to follow Jesus. And as they follow Jesus, what's the very first thing that they start doing? They start telling other people about Jesus and they start pointing other people to Jesus so that they follow Jesus. Disciples who make disciples. We see that happening right here. What's interesting to me are some of the words and phrases that are used here, and we're going to dive into those and kind of pull those apart and get a little bit deeper. On Monday night, we'll go even deeper, if you will, um, and really dive into um, nitty-gritty aspects of discipleship and disciples and discipling and what that all is, was, and is today. So again, invites you to come on Monday nights at 6.30 and dive into that and go deeper. Um, but what we see here is, so these, um, Jesus turns to them and says to them, what are you seeking? Or some Bibles have, what are you looking for? That's a great question, isn't it? What are you looking for? The right question at the right time can change the trajectory of a person's life. The right question at the right time and literally change the trajectory of a person's life. Have you ever experienced that? When I was, how old was I? Early 20s. 
23, 24, something like that. 20, yeah, 24. Um, as I was kind of, you know, really kind of wrestling and struggling in my life, trying to figure out what it was that I was called to do with my life. Um, and that was a kind of the, you know, best of times, worst of times kind of thing. Um, early 20s, um, you know, living life um, somewhat wild and free. <laughs> but at the, on the other side of the coin, experiencing just amazing, having amazing spiritual experiences um, and really coming alive in my, in my faith. And it was at that time, somewhere in there, when um, a person at church, you know, came up to me and asked me, have you ever thought about go, being a pastor? The right question at the right time, which really, you know, began to change the trajectory of my life. Because I had had thoughts about that, that maybe that was something that, you know, God wanted me to do, uh, but to have someone other than myself um, and someone who wasn't a pastor. Pastors are supposed to say that, right? Have you ever thought about <laughs> going into ministry? Have you ever thought about, you know, pastors are supposed to say those things. But to have someone just, just someone in the church who wasn't a pastor, you know, who didn't have the authority, if you will, to say to me, have you ever thought about being a pastor? Then when I said, well, why? Why do you say that? Well, you know, you just, I see things in you. Um, God, you know, I see things in you. I think, I think you could be a pastor. That began to change the trajectory of my life. The right question at the right time. Part of the discipling process, to ask people the right question at the right time. And what are you looking for, or what are you seeking, is a really good question. Don't we all want to answer that question? Aren't we all looking for something, seeking for something in our lives? We are all continually um, trying to find answers. We are all continually trying to find direction. We are all continually trying to um, find satisfaction, uh, to find fulfillment. We're all continually trying to find purpose and meaning? It's a great question. What are you looking for? What are you seeking? As disciples who are going to make disciples, to ask that question of people in our lives literally could make all the difference. It could change the trajectory of people's lives. It could be the question that begins to open up a conversation about faith. It could be the question that leads people into what flirting with the idea that maybe there is something more in life, that maybe there is um, a God, that maybe there is a person who we know who it is. His name is Jesus who can provide the meaning, the direction, um, the purpose that they're looking for. It's a great question. What are you looking for? What are you looking for? What are you looking for? What are you seeking? It's a good question for us to ask ourselves, for us to wrestle with, even though we may think of ourselves already as disciples, as followers of Jesus. What are you looking for? Answers? A deeper, um, closer, more profound experience of God's presence in your life? Are you looking for forgiveness? Are you looking for hope? Are you looking for fulfillment? What are you looking for? Jesus provides that hope, that promise, that fulfillment, that forgiveness, that new life. Jesus provides that. And a life that is a, a walk with him a life of discipleship 
is the life through which we will experience all of that. It is the life through which we will experience the fullness of all that God has for us. That is the life through which you will experience all of the fullness of life that God has for you. And I'll tell you now, it won't be easy. It will be difficult, and it will be challenging, but it will be, oh, so rewarding. Are we ready for this as a church? To truly be disciples who make disciples. Are we ready for this? Jesus turns to them and asks this question, the perfect question, and definitely at the right time. And they, you see this? They begin to flirt with this, you know, idea, who is this person and what's this all about? John says he's, you know, he's the, uh, he's the Lamb of God. And, you know, um, but they kind of, they flirt with it at first and they ask him. So they ask, they answer his question with a question. It's great, right? Uh, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? What's interesting to me is this term rabbi, which John translates, you know, um, it means teacher. That's true, it does mean teacher, but it means oh so much more than just teacher. Rabbi was in the first in that first century, it was a t- it was a word that was being beginning to be used as a title for, for teacher, but it had also in Hebrew has a greater depth and meaning. That word rabbi also can mean my great one, my Lord, my master. My great one, my Lord, my master. That is so much more than just teacher. And what we begin to see here is John painting this picture of a life of discipleship. What does it look like to be a disciple of Jesus? It means to be a person who acknowledges Jesus as not as teacher, yes, but also as great one, Lord, master. That is a relationship with Jesus that goes beyond head knowledge, that goes beyond a teacher-student relationship, That is a relationship um, that is embodied by submission, um, deep personal intimacy. It is a relationship um, in which we don't just follow, like follow the leader, although it is partly that, but it is a relationship that is based in following in a way in which we literally Live like Jesus, the Master, the Lord, the Great One, the Greatest One, and yes, our Teacher. It is a relationship in which our lives look like His life. It's a very deep, personal, and profound relationship. Where are you staying? They asked him. And he said to them, come and see. Come and see. I love that. There's no, um, what? There's no conversation at this point about doctrine. (laughs) Um, They're not talking about scriptures. Um, there's no agenda here. It's just come and see. You, Jesus knows they're flirting with this idea of following him, of conforming life to him, of, of, of living in this relationship in which he becomes their Lord and their master and their teacher. And he just simply invites them, you know, come, come and see. Come, come check it out. Come be with me. And so they, it says, um, they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the 10th hour. 
They moved from just simply kind of following along behind him to asking some, you know, initial questions and flirting with this idea and then quickly progressed to literally um, staying with him. A life of discipleship is one in which we literally abide with Jesus, in which we live with Jesus. We live like Jesus, but we also, in order to live like Jesus, we live with Jesus. And this is the relationship that we see as these disciples, you know, they literally come live with Jesus. Where he stays, they stay. Where he goes, they go. They live with Jesus. I love the show The Chosen. I don't know if any of you have ever watched that show The Chosen. It's, it's just a, it's a, what, one of the things that I love about that show and how it depicts the biblical accounts is the way that it, it shows the disciples living together um, and living with Jesus, quite literally. Like they're on the road, like camping out <laughs> at all these places that they're journeying to, living life together with Jesus. It's abiding with, it's dwelling with, it's living with Jesus. And I think this is where, you know, discipleship starts to get a little bit tricky for us because for them, those first disciples, they, like, they literally got to live with Jesus in the flesh, face to face. For us, it becomes a little more tricky. I think it would be a lot easier, right, if Jesus like, literally appeared, like walked in those doors in the middle of the sermon and said, hey guys, um, you know, come follow me. That would be a totally different scenario than this situation that we find ourselves in now where the presence of Jesus is with us through the Holy Spirit. But we're not off the hook. A life of discipleship is a life lived with Jesus. So how do we live with Jesus? We live with Jesus, it seems to me, through worship, the word, and through witness. Worship, the word, and witness. We can be in the presence of Jesus as, as we worship, part of which is gathering on Sunday, coming together as the church, as disciples, as brothers and sisters in Christ, and to worship Jesus here in this place on Sunday morning. But it's not just going to church, okay? In fact, we probably should make that clear. Discipleship does not necessarily equal going to church. We get that? I should have the whiteboard up here so I could write it down. Discipleship does not equal going to church. Going to church is part of discipleship. It's part of following Jesus. It's part of living with Jesus, but it is not equal. It's not the same thing. It's just part of it. How do we live with Jesus? We worship. We gather together on Sundays and we worship. We also worship um, on our own, in our own prayer life, as we spend time with Jesus in prayer, as we spend time with God in prayer, um, that is also worship. Um, as we literally um, pour ourselves out to Jesus um, through prayer, as we praise God, as we um, call upon God, as we share with God all, all of who we are, what we want, what we need, um, as we ask God to be present and move in us and lead us and direct us, that is, a, that is, that is worship. That is worshipful prayer, you might say. And that is part of how we live with Jesus and literally spend time with Jesus uh, so that we can learn and be shaped and molded and, and transformed by the presence of Jesus. Worship. Um, it's also the word. If we're going to live with Jesus and we're going to live like Jesus, we have to spend time with Jesus in his word. And I would say specifically in the, in the Gospels, although, you know, let's not limit to that. The whole Bible is good. It's all good. But in the Gospels is where we are going to see what Jesus did. 
in the Gospels is where we're going to hear Jesus speak. It's where we're going to hear Jesus' words, literally. We have to spend time in his word every day. And I'm pointing my finger at myself because I have to continually remind myself of that. Daily time in worship and the word. It's absolutely necessary. If we're going to live with Jesus, we've got to spend time there. We have to spend time there. In the word and in worship. And this life of discipleship is also um, witness. Scary word, right? Oh, Pastor Jeff's saying we're going to have to witness. We're going to have to share. With that goes testimony and like sharing my faith with people, right? It, yes, but it's, also, it's, it's more than that. Um, Jesus, going back to Matthew 28, I mean, he says, go and make disciples, baptize them, and, and teach them. Witness, I think, goes hand in hand with teaching. Some of it is just as simple as what John the Baptist did. Hey, there goes the Lamb of God. It's pointing people to Jesus. It's asking that question, what are you looking for? Like, that's an easy conversation to have with people, right? You gather around the coffee pot at the workplace, and, you know, um, Jim is just like, man, I just, my, you know, my wife and I is like, ah, I don't, I don't know who I'm living with anymore. Jim, what are you looking for? What are you looking for in, that, in, your, in your marriage? And then Jim answers, well, you know, I just wish that we could, whatever, fill in the blank. And we know the power and the ability to live um, fully, to be able to give 100% and experience the fullness of life that God has for Jim in that marriage. The only way to do that is through a relationship, first and foremost, with Jesus. So it opens the door to that conversation. What are you looking for? It's such a simple question, which leads then, it can lead to literally witness an opportunity for us to share how we've experienced Jesus. Again, we're not talking about doctrine here. This is not, we're not looking for opportunities to, you know, unpack, well, I don't know what, John Wesley's view on, you know, the doctrine of uh, entire sanctification. That's not what we're talking about here. We're just talking about pointing people to Jesus to help people experience the presence and power of Jesus. So witnessing really is just an opportunity for you to share how you've experienced Jesus. How you've experienced him. It's just an opportunity for you to share what you already what you know about Jesus. And yes, okay, teaching them to obey all the things I've commanded you. Witnessing I think is a way. Let's think of witnessing as just it's just in some form ways it's just teaching to teach people about the things that Jesus has said, to teach people about the things that Jesus did, to teach people about the life that Jesus makes possible. Discipleship is really very simply a process of, of is facilitating the process of becoming like Jesus. We have to be one, and then we can make one. We be one by living like Jesus. Living like Jesus, which we unpacked last month. Living in faith, love, hope, and power. And also now, we're adding to it, discipling others. It goes hand in hand. If we're going to live like Jesus, yes, we live in all of the what all of the all of the good stuff, all of the cool stuff, all of the fantastic um, stuff that we can get excited about, faith and love and hope and power. It also means making disciples. It also means leading other people into a life with Jesus. That's part of being a disciple, of being. A follower. Worship, word, and witness. We gather in worship. We gather together on Sunday 
um, to be the church together, to be the body of Christ together, and then to go out into the world to lead others into relationship with Jesus.